Hello, everybody. Uh, we're uh, uh, having another discussion here on Arthur Atkins. As, as I've mentioned before, I've collected uh, nine of his essays in uh, this book that's uh, been recently out. And um, uh, uh, Richard Kraut's going to be talking about uh, uh, chapter nine, the connection between Aristotle's ethics and politics. Uh, <clears throat> Richard Kraut is professor of philosophy at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. He previously taught at the University of Illinois at Chicago. He is the author of books on Plato, Aristotle, and contemporary moral philosophy. Most recently, The Quality of Life, Aristotle Revised. All right, Richard. Well, here's the question I thought we'd, we'd start out with. Arthur Atkins argues that Aristotle's Nicomachean ethics must be studied in its historical context, context especially in relation to the Greek polis. It is a political work that owes little to Aristotle's metaphysical or scientific outlook and cannot straightforwardly be adapted by contemporary philosophers, such as, for example, Alistair uh, McIntyre. Uh, uh, which of these claims, if any, <laughs> do you agree with? Okay. Okay. Uh, to begin with, uh, I I think Adkins is definitely right that the uh, Nicomachean Ethics is uh, meant to be the first volume in a two volume work, uh, followed by uh, the politics. Uh, and um, uh, that's the, the right way of reading them. Uh, un unfortunately, given the nature of our educational system, it's often difficult to fit into a single quarter or semester of study of both works and to do a decent job. So for institutional reasons, it often happens that the Nicomachean ethics is studied um, without going on to the politics. And similarly, in a course on the politics, there often is not enough time to begin with the Nicomachean ethics. But nonetheless, it's, it's absolutely true uh, that uh, this is, these works are meant to um, uh, fit together. And Aristotle makes that quite clear at the beginning of the Nicomachean ethics, uh, when he says, uh, he asks the question, uh, to what science or what field of study is the current discussion, uh, does it belong? And he answers uh, politics. And then at the end of the work, uh, he comes back to that theme. And he says, uh, have we finished? Uh, no, because we now have to go on to talk about uh, how to put these ideas into action by making use of our, uh, the political system. So we have to gather together many constitutions of uh, city-states and uh, decide what institutions uh, are appropriate uh, given what we've said in this work. So Atkins is clearly uh, saying something that is um, uh, obviously correct, even though the, that point is often disregarded or cannot be attended to uh, because of the, the difficulty of fitting both of them into a, a single course. Nonetheless, um, I, there are some uh, points that uh, Adkins makes uh, in this uh, chapter that are more controversial. Uh, and one of the main themes that he um, uh, develops is that we really have to read the ethics in the context of Greek political life. So uh, when he says that, uh, the people he has in mind as uh, not paying sufficient attention to that are contemporary philosophers. He names a few of them. One of them is uh, Alastair McIntyre, um, who are interested in appropriating Aristotle and making him uh, a philosopher that we can uh, guide our lives by today. And Atkins, I take Atkins to be saying 
that would mean our institutions would have to be the same as the institutions uh, that Aristotle was familiar with. And, and obviously that's not the case. So these contemporary uh, philosophers who want to be Aristotelians and want to take Aristotle as their guide to ethics are failing to recognize the political embeddedness of the Nicomachean ethics. So that's one of the major, um, very interesting, but I think controversial uh, ideas uh, in this chapter. And uh, I, um, I myself think that um, it's right to look to Aristotle and ask the question, um, what can we um, learn from Aristotle that is still true and that is still important, as a, an important part of our contemporary moral philosophy. And one reason I um, think that this is appropriate is Aristotle advertises himself as philosophizing about the human good. Uh, and that, uh, I, I take that to mean that he thinks the arguments he gives and the conclusions he comes to are applicable, not just to uh, his contemporaries and not just to the situation of Athens, Sparta and, and other Greek cities, but to any political community that has developed to a sufficient degree to allow a certain amount of leisure and to allow uh, there to be free citizens who deliberate with each other. That is our situation. Uh, and so I think it's a fair question. Uh, what, does, what Aristotle says about the human good um, still uh, carry any uh, weight uh, for us even if the political situation that we're in, uh, a, a large representative uh, democracy, political parties, a, a, you know, very different context, can we nonetheless um, take things from Aristotle's ethics and say these are still valuable points? And there, I think the answer is well, not always, um, but um, there are some very uh, attractive plausible views that Aristotle uh, puts forward that I think we should uh, accept. Uh, just to give uh, one example, um, uh, Aristotle says, well, some people think that uh, the, the highest goal of human life is to be virtuous. And he thinks there's, there's something to that, but it has to be elaborated and refined. You can, count as being virtuous when you go to sleep. You don't stop being the kind of person you are when you're sleeping, uh, but suppose you slept uh, for the rest of your life, that would not be a good life for you, even if uh, it would remain true. Here's a good person who has fallen asleep. Um, that would be a very unfortunate situation. So, the, so Aristotle's point is, the value of being virtuous, of having these qualities, is to exercise them, to use them. And so it is an activity rather than being in a certain state or condition that we should uh, take our well being to consist in. That's, I think, that's a very important point. It, it means uh, for example, even if you have a high social standing or you have a lot of money in the bank, you can be asleep uh, for most or all of your life. And those uh, facts would remain true of you, but that would not be a good life. And so I think eventually Aristotle builds on this point and comes to the conclusion that um, the, the goal of human life has to be the activ activation or the actualization, uh, the putting into activity and practice of uh, certain qualities that we have taken a long time to acquire. It's not just having those qualities, 
uh, but exercising them in action. Um, I think that uh, point by itself um, counts against many common conceptions of what a good life is. Just, you know, having a lot of power, uh, having a lot of money. These are states that you're in, they're not activities. So the point that uh, well-being consists in certain kinds of activities, I think is very insightful uh, and cuts a lot of ice. Uh, another point uh, that Aristotle uh, makes is a very important point about pleasure. So uh, very soon after Aristotle's time, we get the, the rise of the Epicurean school, which um, is still uh, the, the idea that uh, uh, well-being consists in pleasure became a very common view in, uh, in Europe. Uh, utilitarians uh, hold this view and uh, many others, even those who are not utilitarians. Aristotle has uh, a very good alternative to um, this conception of well-being as pleasure, he he thinks pleasure is very is very important. Uh, a life that has little pleasure in it is not a very good life. So, in some way or other, pleasure has to. I would I would use the word suffuse. It it has to be um, present in our lives frequently and on a regular basis. It can't be something that we experienced once or occasionally, and, uh, and um, that would not be a good life. But even though a good life must have pleasure in it on a regular basis, that's not what uh, the highest good is. The highest good is taking pleasure in certain other activities. Uh, that I think is also a very insightful and important point. It, 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 um, it means that uh, well-being does consist in some kind of psychological condition, something having to do with the state of our consciousness, uh, what life feels like to us, and pleasure is, needs to be there in our experience of life. But there are lots of other aspects of experience besides pleasure, and those are just as important uh, as pleasure. I think that's also uh, a very valuable point. And just to add one more, uh, in, in this part of the ethics that Atkins focuses on in this paper, which is the idea that human beings have a function, um, Part of that uh, passage talks about the, um, the emotions and the ability we have to shape our emotions in accordance with our reason and understanding. And I, th I, and I again think this is a very insightful point that uh, what our emotional life is like and the degree to which we can reform it, shape it, um, structure it uh, by thought, reason, and discussion, it, that again is a very um, important insight uh, that uh, we can take from Aristotle. So I, I have a, 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 an understanding of Aristotle that, um, is uh, puts it, takes him away from the Greek context uh, and says there there are these very uh, insightful points that are still uh, we should make use of today. Uh, tur turning to a slightly different aspect of Adkins' argument, he he is right again that we should not overemphasize the biological and metaphysical component of the uh, ethical and political works. It's there, but it's not, um, it's not as though Aristotle derives his ethics from biological ideas or from metaphysical ideas. 
but it 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 is certainly true that at certain times he does appeal to certain um, certain aspects of philosophy that he brings from his other works. So he had he is very interested in methodological questions. How do you make progress in uh, any discussion of a subject? And his ideas are shaped by the work he has done on biology and uh, metaphysics and so on. So he, he is very aware of Plato's methodological ideas of, of how you make progress in the study of a subject. Uh, and he, he brings those to bear on the ethical and political works. So there is, I think it is important to acknowledge that Aristotle's ethical political works are informed by his conception of how to study any subject. And then at certain times, his metaphysical picture plays a very important role. This is uh, um, uh, most obviously true when he talks about the best human life. Uh, and there he, he appeals to what the lives of the gods are, uh, are like. So he has a, a general conception of how the universe works. And there is a role to be played by a supreme being and a supreme being has the best kind of life. And uh, that life consists in uh, reflection, contemplation, study, uh, a purely rational intellectual life. And he, he appeals to that as an important part of the argument that if, if we have an opportunity to lead that kind of intellectual philosophical life, that would be the best life for a human being. Uh, and that uh, is, uh, fits in with his general conception of the universe. So at certain times, uh, there is an appeal uh, to the metaphysics. Uh, okay, so <laughs> those are my main uh, reactions to uh, this, uh, this chapter. Um, it, it, it has a very, it's very impressive in the way in which he brings uh, into his reading of Aristotle uh, his relationship to um, Greek culture and Greek poetry and so on. I think he's absolutely right that you should also read Aristotle in the context of the people that Aristotle himself read, which included poets uh, as well as other philosophers. And you do in, in the politics, uh, because uh, Aristotle seems very uh, uh, interested in looking at how uh, other state city states in, in the region differ in, in certain uh, uh, ways that they structure activities in, in the state. Um, so do you think this might support the idea that we need to know more about the how those uh, various cities were operating to be able to assess uh, Aristotle's own version of this? Yes, I think you know knowledge of Greek political history, uh, you know, reading Thucydides and Herodotus and uh, the tragedians and Aristophanes and having that larger cultural context um, is very valuable for a full understanding uh, of, of Aristotle. Um, a, a lot of the politics uh, addresses the, the conflict between the rich and the poor. And uh, that, 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 again, that does have to be understood in terms of, well, what, was, what is he talking about here when he talks about the rich and the poor? But again, I would say this uh, is not utterly alien to political problems that we are experiencing today. Uh, and he, he also says one of the ways to address this problem is to have a large middle class. And that's an idea that has, you know, is currently uh, being revived uh, that uh, we have, you know, uh, having uh, a uh, living in poverty 
uh, is uh, not acceptable for us, and we have to provide opportunities and institutions to lift people out of poverty. Yes, well, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's it's quite a, it's quite an interesting project, and and uh, um, <clears throat> you know you can put some of these uh, you know uh, arguments. As we're looking at the standalone chapter, but they also fit into his you know uh, his larger work, merit and responsibility, which he also goes into language usage and 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 uh, which is sometimes controversial, uh, feminine use of certain words and so forth. Uh, and, find certain things. Yes, well, uh, um, just to uh, uh, agree with you, his point about differences between our word virtue and the Greek word arete are very important. Uh, they have, um, they uh, are not exact correspondences or, or synonyms. And it's very important, even though this is the common way of translating the Greek term arete, it's always important not to import into that um, modern or contemporary conceptions of what uh, the what virtue is. So yeah, again, a very valuable point. Yeah, well, I, I hope that uh, uh, people who have, have tuned into this uh, feel stimulated to to uh, take another look at, at Arthur Atkins and, and, uh, and also uh, they can compare it to, uh, you know, the uh, um, the quality of life, uh, Aristotle revised uh, right. so, uh, as well, and 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 have some uh, context there. Uh, thank, thank you very much, and you. and uh, we'll. Thank you, we'll... For thank you for inviting me. I enjoyed uh, discussing this with you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.